What is up? What is up? In the shop. Uh, always gotta give a little intro, you know, because these things usually upload so everybody can watch them later. Hope you guys are having a great Sunday. I'm gonna be on here only a few minutes. I gotta go and start a nice little dinner. Um, working on that TV lift cabinet project, though. Started, well, I started weeks ago, and I'm just I'm finally getting some time where I can give carving videos to you guys and be able to uh, work on this so today i've just been working on getting this front face of the tv lift cabinet built and together and uh i thought i'd just go live real quick kind of show everybody what's uh what is up so right now it's all cherry and that far end is cherry burl before i go though i'll bring the camera and give you guys a real close look of every on everything um, been working on making tenons for the joints. Hope you guys can hear me well because now I'm like way across the room, but been cutting uh, spots in the ends to put everything together. And I'm using uh, these little, I don't know what the heck are they called. I can't think of what they're called now. They're like tenons though. You get them from Festool. And uh, I do not have a Festool, or Dominoes. I don't have the Festool Domino cutter hey shane what's up man the uh domino jig or tool is just astronomical amount of money so i've been using the uh router to cut spots so i could fit these in hey what's up carl working on uh the tv lift cabinet uh tv lift cabinet had given me a lift to build a project to do a, a video on and everything uh write something up on my uh website and stuff like that so getting into that project the goal is to have this done it has to be done uh by september there's a woodworking show in upstate new york at in blue mountain and uh blue mountain lake and uh i'm in it so this is a piece i want to bring a big piece for that show i just use the same oil i use in my gas saws i know some people want to use uh, different oil and things, but I don't even worry about it. What's going on, Sam? What is happening? Uh, I just, I know a lot of people use like canola oil in their battery saws and stuff, but I mean, I just run the same oil I run in my gas saws. If you have her battery saws, I, yeah, sure, why not? Um, if I had a job where I had to carve inside somebody's house, like a post or something, I would flush out drain the oil that was in it for the bar and probably run the saw all the way to empty with maybe some canola oil and then do the whole job with canola oil so it doesn't smell like you know bar oil but i'm outside i'm, I'm not too worried about it what do i mean by that by what my friend by draining the oil or by carving inside someone's house I'm not sure what your question here is. For the most part, I run the same oil that's in my uh, oil. Okay. So, my gas saws, I run regular chainsaw bar oil for the bar, if we're talking bar oil. Hey, what's up, schmanched man? Um, if we're talking bar oil, I run harvest king bar oil for the bar in all my chainsaws that's what i run just regular chainsaw bar oil if we're talking about oil for gas and oil mix i buy the steel uh synthetic gas oil mix oil um it's a gray bottle and that's that's what i that's what i buy i buy the steel mix oil and then i buy the cheap oil for my bars so i hope that helps you out um so not carving though i'm in the shop um just gonna be on for a few minutes working on the tv lift cabinet I was just talking about uh hey jennifer just talking about using these uh tenons they're called something else i already said it dominoes from festool they even say uh domino on them and festool on the one side except for that one because i just threw it on the ground these little guys so i'm putting all my joints together with these and using my router 
to uh, cut the spots for them because a domino jig, tool, joiner machine is an astronomical amount of money. And, uh, you know, I think I would only consider buying one if I could sell a handful of pieces like this, then, yeah, maybe we'd buy one. But in the meantime, using my router, I'll show you. I use my router in this jig to cut these slots, which I will show you guys in a second once I get this disassembled. Because now I gotta take it apart, put some glue in it, and clamp it back up. Come on. Don't wanna whack it too hard. I don't really wanna dent the wood all up especially now that I'm this far I mean there's still quite a bit of sanding that has to be done and edges taken down um, actually you know what before I fully dissemble I'll show you guys show you guys let me spin this all right yeah they use cooking oil Shane they use the canola oil, canola cooking oil, I believe. I just use regular bar oil because I've already got it. And I seem like the cooking oil I've looked at seems to cost about the same. So this is the front face of the lift cabinet. I just took this piece off, as you guys saw. So this would go here. We got a piece of cherry burl. This is all cherry wood, cherry with the sap wood, which is closer to the bark. Sap wood, right? Bark, sap wood, more heartwood, cherry burl. Mm, cherry barrel so these are the tenons I was talking about cutting so I cut a space pop a tenon in there makes for a good strong joint and uh, yeah pop it together and glue it up it's good to go so that'll be the whole front face of the cabinet and now I'll tell you guys what the layout is we'll have a drawer a big drawer another drawer the rest of that will be a door a single door and a single door so then above this drawer we'll have a shelf and another shelf and then and then the sides will be these black walnut panels that I've created live not well the live edge will be gone but we'll have the sap wood in there with the nice dark heartwood. I like to use up everything and try to work it into the design. Like this is all black walnut, but this is the sap wood. So this is closer to the bark. We're going to incorporate these panels. Some of them have some really neat. So this is dark like walnut. All right. It is walnut, but you can actually see the color coming through. Those will be the side panels. Let's walk through my super clean organized shop look at all this crap look at this it's like a bomb went off in here all my carving clothes so this will be the top black walnut that's black walnut with the uh, sapwood um shane when i looked up the uh so everybody shane just asked is it cheaper to use cooking oil or chainsaw bar oil? I looked up cooking oil on Amazon, and to be honest, it's going to cost me like the same price. I don't even think it was a full gallon. I think cooking oil was going to cost me a little bit more than uh, than bar oil. So you got to shop around. I mean, depending on where you're located, maybe cooking oil would be less for you. Uh, for me, looking at Amazon, I'm like, meh, that ain't worth it. Not worth it. I think a lot of it, though, is the environmental friendly aspect of it. You know, it's cooking oil. Splatter on the ground. If you want to carve in someone's house, it's environmentally friendly. The way I see it, though, is I'm already running gas saws. We're using oil finishes. We're using spray paint. Unless I'm carving in someone's house, then I don't really see the point in the cooking oil. Uh, my other concern with cooking oil is what's it going to do when it's really cold out? I don't know. Is it going to get all congealed, you know, and get all nasty after it's been in the saw for a while? 
Uh, is it going to clog stuff up? What was it? You just said it'll clog, give you issues. Due to the high temperatures, yeah. But, yeah, you're running a battery saw. I just run regular chainsaw oil, man. Regular bar oil. What's going on, Clay? We're just going over the TV lift cabinet project. This is the front of it. This is the top. That's the base. This is just the front part portion. Doing a little work. Thought I'd go live real quick before I got to go and uh, I got to go actually in a minute here and start dinner. But I thought I'd pop on and say hi. Um, so talk about a couple videos I just put up. Um, we went over, put up a video. We replaced the carburetor, gas lines, filters, spark plug, all that jazz on that Poulon Predator saw. Um it fired right up, was running good, right? Full tank of gas. Then I went out and started the tutorial for you guys, just the very beginner bear carving tutorial. And the saw made a few cuts. And if you guys watched that video, I was just struggling. I mean, that thing was cutting out. Every time I tilt the saw, it'd stall. I'd tilt, it'd stall, stall, stall. What the heck? It was running good and stall. So I actually was... So I shot the video doing the carb, right? And then I went out and carved, went out to carve like the same day. Got frustrated, switched over to the MS-170, finished that video for you guys. So break it down to editing. I was editing the video, fixing up the saw, and realized that if you didn't watch that video, because I know everybody's like, oh, I don't have that saw, I'm not going to watch this video. Um, but I realized I put the gas lines on wrong. I switched them around. And, uh, yeah, ask Jordy why, uh, why they run that more than, uh, he's probably said it. I haven't seen it, though. I'm not really sure why everybody runs that. I'd be interested to know there, Shane, um, as well. So, sorry, guys. I get sidetracked super easy. <laughs> no worries. So, um, I realized I put the gas lines on wrong, so I went ahead so, so, man, how many times am I going to say so? Pull it together, Kyle. And uh, realized they were on wrong. Went ahead, pulled it all apart, put the lines on. I had to put all new lines in it and then switch them around because they were cut too short to reach where they needed to reach because I put them on wrong. Since then, the saw has run great. And hopefully I'm not going to look silly here, but I hope either this week or next, to put out a full tutorial, easy, simple, very beginner bear, uh, using that homeowner style Poulon Predator chainsaw. Now, the other chainsaw I've got is a Craftsman um, used. Again, these are saws like I got from people I know, but they're basically the saws that are all over like Facebook Marketplace, Swap Meets, used cheap saws. I think the goal is to show people, like, I know I went out and bought a brand new MS-170 to do tutorials for you guys with, but not everybody can do that. Some people just have a saw under the bench they want to start carving with, and I think that would be, I think these videos would be beneficial to, you know, you if you're in that group. Now, not every, uh, it's kind of just going to be a series, right? Very beginner kind of series. I want to do a bunch of bears. I do have a cardinal video. And I want to get into maybe a couple other basic things that you can do with just a stock chainsaw. Um, yeah, I see that. They're a uh, manch demand. I see, I, I have heard that actually, that regular chainsaw. So he said, regular chainsaw bar oil soaks in and stains the wood. I'm carving bears. I'm not carving fine furniture. I'm not carving things like that. So in my mind, if I'm carving a bear and we're getting it stained with oil, if you will, the next step after carving is sanding or hitting it with a torch. Oil's pretty flammable, so even that little bit of bar oil that's all over usually just burns off. And then we sand it, and then we paint it, and then it's not noticeable. I mean, I haven't had an issue with paint lifting or anything like that. So I don't, I still don't see a problem with the bar oil that's meant for chainsaws being used. Um, 
after you made that comment, yeah, I do I do remember hearing people say, oh, they use it because bar oil stains the wood. But you're going to burn it. You're going to paint it. You're going to do all those things anyway. So whatever. Preference, I guess. Um, yeah. Anyway, so working on the very beginner, new beginner, first time carver kind of series, I do want to make a bunch of these videos. And then I want to step it up to like advanced beginner where we're going to add like the next set of tools you should get right before you go super hog wild crazy. And then I want to get into doing a series for like novice and then advanced and then pro. I don't consider myself a pro. So we'll be kind of learning and stepping up together as we go. Yeah, man. Start it up. I have no problem. Like, I really have no problem. A lot of carving channels have been popping up, and, like, that's to be expected because there's been a lot of YouTube carving channels to start, right? Like, or, or that have popped up already. So, like, when people are learning to carve here and they decide they want to start a carving channel, like, go for it. Like, go for it. Um, You know, go for it. I have no issues with that. I really don't. Anybody on here making other carving videos, all those videos, right? All these other carving videos and mine support each other. We may not verbally say it. Some of us might not like each other. Some of us might be good friends. All that is 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 relevant, but it's irrelevant at the same time. What I mean is by supporting each other is it helps this community grow here on YouTube. So if someone else starts another carving channel just chainsaw carving whether it's step by step whether it's just showing off your art in the scheme of things you're helping the chainsaw carving community grow here on youtube and you're helping all of us get noticed for creating this art and putting it out there you really are so i say hey go for it go for it a bunch of really great channels have popped up and it's 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 really good it is it's an awesome thing um you know, in starting a YouTube channel and all that, all I can say is do your best to worry about your channel and what you're doing. Don't get wrapped up in like what everyone else is doing in the sense of like their growth, how many videos they put out a week or a month. Do what fits you and your schedule. Set goals and do your best to reach those goals growing a youtube channel for me has been tough it has been tough i've been on here i think since 2015 2016 i thought i'd have way more subscribers by now uh still trying to get to 10,000. right you guys go ahead you look at other channels you guys mentioned jordy i know you all watch jordy jordy's a great guy we're pals we have no issues Jordy's got like over 35,000 35, subscribers and i think we started around the same time his channel has grown much, much faster. He's able to put out more videos. There's a lot more people that can get involved and things like that. It is a pile of work even after it started, Clay. Clay said it looks like a pile of work to start a channel. It is, man, and to keep going. Yeah, exactly, Matt. So I know everybody might not see these comments once this uploads. Uh, Matt from Matt Carves. You guys can check out Matt Carves' channel. Um, we all carve differently anyway. I love watching lots of other channels. Exactly. We all have a different attitude, a different aspect, a different way of looking at things. Um, I watch other channels too. I watch Ryan Cook. I watch Jordy. I don't do a lot of wood spirits, right? But I still watch Jordy. One, because I want to support him. I watch Ryan because I want to support him too. I watch, uh, there's a whole bunch. So like there are. Uh, my buddy Dale, rough cut, chainsaw carving, Dale Rough. He's got a channel on here. Um, there's others. So if you're watching, you're like, oh, you don't watch my channel. I probably do. I just, I don't watch a ton of YouTube, to be honest, because of woodworking, chainsaw carving, making videos, day job, kids, wife, life. It's busy, you know? If, uh, if I had a big, crazy channel that brought in the money, like, and I could quit my full-time job, then I would be, uh, you know, doing this full-time guys but i pretty much do it full-time as it is and make it work it 
editing though is a big one uh fabienne hello de france what's up what do we got here four names you want to add to your channel yeah matt exactly so support anyone who is positive and authentic that's it man it is running a youtube channel and having a youtube channel to me it's it's being real um sometimes i have a hard time opening up i try to always be myself i'm just not like a super uh outgoing person which sounds probably sounds funny right because i'm on here making videos so you're like how could you not be an outgoing person i i realize sometimes i'm kind of like you know I have a hard time, like, Ryan Cook. I love watching Ryan's videos because Ryan is like, oh, yeah, all the time, in your face. And I'm like, I want to do videos more like that, right? Where they're fun and energetic and, like, that, that's Ryan. That's his personality. I have a tough time having that personality just because that's, you know, this is not who I am all the time. But I love watching him, and it helps encourage me to act more that way. Why? Because that is more of what I want to be able to do. So, like creating youtube and things it's not just about you and the people that follow you it's about the things that the other channels you support and you watch they help influence you right so like channels like that here here's some channels that i watch that aren't even related to carving or woodworking i watch mr beast that channel is great it is whether you like it or you don't i think mr beast his channel is awesome i really do guy gives away all kinds of money to people that need it helps out communities, does all kinds of great stuff. And it's one of those channels where I can watch with the kids. My son loves watching Mr. Beast. We spend time, we watch him, we watch his stuff all the time. Camera shy? Oh yeah, man, your first few videos, you're gonna hate the way you sound. You're gonna hate the way you look. Your voice is gonna sound weird to you, but not to anyone else. Um, everything's backwards. So when you're like, oh yeah, let's point over here. You're pointing over there, like, it's it's all weird it's all weird don't even stress about it it's just like your first chainsaw carving right it's kind of like that was supposed to be a bear i don't know what that is but you keep it and you learn from it i still got some of my first videos on here most of my videos are still on here they're awful they're awful awful but i leave them up because sometimes i'll go back and watch my own video and i'm like oh yeah i don't do that anymore you know like key things saying so which I get caught up in saying so. Try not to say so. Um, and uh, those pause words. You try not to say those words because then it kind of it it kind of messes up the flow of you speaking. So being able to speak and being able to be clear as to what it is you're trying to tell the people watching, those are all things you know to work on. Um, I watch a lot of. Uh, I watch several different, and now because I want to tell you, I can't think of the names of the channels, but I watch several different YouTube channels that are specifically about growing, um, growing your YouTube channel. So I suggest looking for those. They're like growth channels about how to grow your YouTube channel and how to start your YouTube channel. I mean, the best place to start when you want to start a YouTube channel is start searching YouTube. There are some awesome, awesome, awesome channels on here. Uh, Tim Schmoyer. I can't think of what is, is it video creators maybe? Tim Schmoyer, great channel, lots of good stuff. Um, video creators, did I say video creators? Maybe that's, is that Tim's channel? I can't remember. There's a bunch of them that I watch though. And uh, they've all, a lot of times they fall into um, having videos that seem very similar. But again, it's like watching carving videos. They all do it a little bit different. They all have a different personality. They all have a little bit different angle even though it's the same topic and it can really help you grow so search that stuff if you're thinking about doing a channel um i see there it is um uh ah, can't do those things they don't sound great i started my videos with an iphone that's it right now you guys are on my iphone as you guys know now i try to do tutorials and things two camera views those are my gopro uh, what are they? GoPro 7 Blacks. So they can go on Wi-Fi, but that doesn't always work. Anyway, two GoPros. One on the, you know, you guys, you've, you've watched. You know what I'm saying. 
But all you need is your cell phone, a good connection, having it charged or being able to plug it in with a couple good stands on it. You know, a good stand and a halfway decent mic. You don't even have to have a crazy mic. Spend 20 bucks on a mic, attach it up where the phone is, keep it back from what you're doing, and uh, let her rip, bud. You know, grip them and rip them. Make some videos. Go through, edit it. See, I like my iPhone. I started with my iPhone, and I still use it from time to time because it's compatible, obviously, with my iPad, where now I do a lot of my editing and taking my videos from the uh, GoPros, putting them on my iPad, mashing them together, editing and creating, you know, those tutorials and other videos for you guys. So I'm an Apple fan. I like, I like all that stuff. I like that it can all be synced up and shared back and forth and all that. Keep checking my watch because I got like one minute and I got to go. So uh, that's that. Using your phone, I like Apple because it come, a new Apple phone comes with the uh, iMovie iMovie to me has been the absolute easiest and most simple editing tool for videos I've used. I've tried three others. One I paid for, could not figure it out. Another one came free on a computer I had, could not figure it out. Another one was like this high-end editing thing. Here's a trial. Other than that, it's like $100. Way too complicated. Couldn't figure it out. iMovie seems to be the absolute easiest thing to use. But you got to have a lot of storage on your phone. Um, um, um. Thanks, Monster Man. I appreciate that. I really do. What's up, Sam? Here, here. Model makers, channel color, north of the border. Carving ideas. Yeah, that's cool, man. You get ideas from all different stuff. You know what I like watch? I like watching uh, play sculpting. And now I can't think. You know what stinks? I get on here to talk to you guys. And we start talking about stuff like this. And complete brain fart. I can't. I can see the channel. I can see his work. I cannot think of the name of the channel. But they sculpt out of clay. Like little figures, right? Like Batman and Superman and, and all the Marvel dudes and all that. Holy cow. If you want a chainsaw carve, watch some guys sculpt out of clay. For me, I can see the angles better as they're putting it together. And I'm like, woo, super cool. Because that's what I want to get out of the log or a design. or a, If you know what I'm trying to say here, you can see it without the color. And you can see it come together. And for my mind, I'm able to like break that back down and think about it. I would like to do some superheroes, but I'm always a little sketchy as to like, my video down or you know i don't know i don't know we'll see what happens maybe one day but being inspired to create art doesn't always have to be from the same medium it doesn't always have to be carving and wood and all that you know there's it's clay um another guy i watch he's actually on tiktok and he spray paints that's all he does is he does spray paint art super inspirational watching him his words you know, I haven't heard anything super inspirational, but for me, watching him, it's a whole different art form. Taking spray paint and creating all these cool little things, and I don't know, just something I enjoy watching from time to time. It's so funny. Got on here, I was going to talk about my TV lift cabinet, and then we end up talking chainsaws. I love you guys. It's great. It's great. It's all good. Yeah, I put up a video, I can't remember about carving and stuff on TikTok, and Dale from Rough Cut was like, man, I don't know how you do it. Dad, your dad, husband, work a full-time job, side hustle, which is the business, <coughs> chainsaw carving and videos. Here I am woodworking. It's a lot. It's a lot. He's like, man, that's a lot. I said, yeah, it is a lot. You know, it's just like, Waking up every day being motivated to do what I want to do. Being focused on the things I want to focus on, whether it's this stuff, whether it's the family or, excuse me, whatever it is that I got to do, right? But it's also like I have to create to relieve stress. All right, later, Matt. Thanks for stopping, man. I got to go too. But I have to create to relieve stress. I've been blessed with the ability to create things and I've got to just, like, I've got to create I have to create to feel fulfilled within myself. If I'm not creating, 
and I haven't been creating and we're not on vacation, I become miserable. I do. I feel depressed. I feel beside myself, you know, like, what am I doing? I'm not making anything in, in, in life feels so bland. Um, so creating for me, I just have to, I don't even know why I'm getting into this, but it's just, it's something on my mind today. Um, probably because of that comment from Dale, but creating is just who I am party, you know, and it probably is for a lot of you too. It's a great release. It's a great thing to, you know, you get joy and get over stress and Yeah, right? Shane gets it. Um, or I'm sorry, Sam gets it. Shane, thumbnail. So YouTube success. If you watch those videos before you jump into actually creating the channel, jumping off the topic of what I was saying, guys, um, you want to create a channel about gaming and carving. So they try to tell you to create a channel based on one thing or the other. Uh Go for it, right? My channel is called Kyle Hall Woodworker. How much woodworking do we actually do here? We do a lot of chainsaw carving. I should just make it Chainsaw Hall. I've got some people that say that to me. All right, Chainsaw Hall. That should just probably be my channel name because we mostly do chainsaw carving. But I picked Kyle Hall Woodworker and I'm just going to stick to it, you know? So think about your name and what you want to do but when you start watching those videos about how to start a channel what should i do blah 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 they're going to tell you pick a topic stick to that topic focus on that topic sometimes it's tough for a specific channel to veer off into other things and splitting your time into different avenues yeah you can draw different people but like you lose views here because you did better on the gaming you got more gaming people so when you put up a carving video they might be like meh and your views go down because you only got a few carvers following compared to gaming guys. Or vice versa, right? Your carvers might go, eh, I don't really want to watch gaming stuff, so I'm out. Just some things to think about. Not trying to deter you. This is your idea. This is your thing. I say go for it. Try it. See what happens. But also check out those videos. A lot of these videos that they put out and videos that I've watched that I'm explaining, um, shorten the curve, right? Because... There's so much trial and error and creating videos and content and all that sort of stuff that if you can get any sort of tip to help you along, any sort of little tip, you want to just like grab it and go so that, uh, so that you, you, you can jump that part of the curve, right? And growth is tough. It, it can be really tough. Um, channels have to network. Like you're starting a new channel, you'll have to remind me. I have so much going on, I will I will forget, and that's just I will. You'll have to jump on, remind me, and I will make sure to hit subscribe once you got it up and running. Shouting out back and forth through channels is good too. Um, to be able to share channels and get other people to help grow. I mean, I've mentioned Dale on here. Dale probably won't even uh, Dale might not even watch this video. He's running a YouTube channel. He's busy. He's He's actually carving full-time, I believe, but he's got a pretty good channel. The dude is, uh, what is he, up in, he's up in Canada. A bunch of you guys might be as well. The dude's on the news and on TV. He's doing some carvings for the school and stuff. I thought that was awesome, super awesome. So back to uh, my mindset, right? Carving, creating art, and all that kind of stuff, and you all might have the same mindset. Do those things to stay calm and all that. There's also a reason why I push so, so hard. And uh, yeah, all right. Canada. I'm in New York, but you guys get it. Um, the other, there goes my GoPro. The other reason I do this is because I want to leave a legacy. I want to leave a legacy for my family, for my kids. No, I don't have like some terminal disease that I know of at least, but I want to leave, I want to leave a legacy. I just don't want to be another name in the dust. You know what I mean? I, uh, yeah, they really aren't. I want to leave them something, even if it's just my art in my name and I don't get to leave them a fortune, right? I want to be able to have my kids see something at some point and be like, 
dad made that years ago or your grandfather made that years ago. That's like, that's what I want to leave behind, you know? Make all these videos and, and YouTube, you know, you hope to make some money, but at the same time, when my kids get older, if YouTube's still running and all my content is saved and I'm gone on to the next life, this YouTube legacy, this channel will hopefully still be here and they can come back and spend time with me. And their grandkids, or my grandkids can, right? My great grandkids, if this thing is still up and running. And if they can't come here, I've got all my videos saved so they can come back and watch them. I don't know why, but for some reason, that's important to me. But yeah, figured I'd share it with you guys. You know, why do I create? That's, that's some way I create. So I said I had to go like 10 minutes ago. I really do. I gotta go. I gotta go start making dinner, you guys. Legacy. That's right, buddy. A legacy. I wanna leave a legacy. Might not be money sort of legacy, which it would be great, but uh, hopefully it'll be something, something. So hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you guys have an awesome week if I don't see you on here. And uh, I'll be making some more videos. We'll be, uh, we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. You guys have a great week, all right? Love y'all. Thanks for hitting the sub. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye.